Welcome to Everyday Cooking with Anne. You know, good food is a way to connect with others and create great memories. And hundreds of people have bought my cookbooks as I have catered weddings and events over the years. And now I'd like to become your personal cooking coach and help you make great food step by step from scratch. And I will post a new video every week, twice a week. Thank you. Welcome to Everyday Cooking with Ann Sigurd where I'll show you how easy it is to make delicious, nutritious food on a budget, step-by-step step, from scratch. Subscribe to my channel and I will become your personal cooking coach. In today's video, you'll find the full recipe and a link to my cookbook in the description below. Today we're gonna to be talking about barbecue chicken pizza. This is one of our family's favorite pizzas. The, th those in our family who don't even like pizza love this pizza. Okay, to start off, I've, I've already chopped uh, chicken breast. I have two chicken breasts here that I've chopped into small pieces. I'm gonna add it to a very hot stove. I have a little bit of olive oil in here. Saute it in, I'm gonna add this right now so it'll be sizzling and ready to go. This will only take a couple minutes of chicken cooks very quickly because it's chopped into small pieces. I'm going to add already a little bit of salt. Fresh ground pepper. And we'll saute this for just a minute. I make other pizzas too uh, with almost any ingredient. This is one of our favorites. As you can see over here, I've already had my um, barbecue pizza sauce ready to go on, on the chicken, on the pizza. The chicken needs to be nice and tender. And so you only need to saute the chicken for maybe about two to three minutes in very high temperature. I've turned it down to low and I'm about ready to turn it off now. What I want you to be aware of is that before I started my chicken, I put my pizza stone, which is very important for the correct, chewy, and very crusty crust. So I put my, as you can see, my pizza stone is heating up and it's at 475 degrees. Uh, a lot of pizza makers who ha have their own business, they put their pizzas into a 750 degree oven. We're not able to do that in our, in our own com uh, kitchen here, but it's almost as good. Okay, so we're waiting for our chicken here. Here's our sauce. We're gonna come over here and show you what it looks like. We've had our pizza dough raising for the last 45 minutes, which has given me time to prepare everything I need for the barbecue chicken. So I'm gonna punch down our dough and you can see what it looks like now. This was just a small little bowl. So it's, it's almost double, two and a half size, the size. I'm going to punch it down. I'm gonna put, this is, this is one of the things that I use for all kinds of pastries and everything. This is a, called a pastry cloth. And I use this for cinnamon rolls, cookies, pie crust, you name it. This is my indispensable tool that I use for almost everything that I make. I'm going to put a little bit of flour on the stockinette. This is called the stockinette onto my rolling pin. The reason you want to do this is you don't want to incorporate too much flour into the pizza dough. You want to make sure it's light and fluffy that we want it to be, how we want it to be. And so let me show you what we're going to do next. I'm going to take the pizza dough, put it on the middle, and I, we've decided today we're going to make this into um, three pizzas. The dough, the recipe for this dough is on a prior video, so you can learn how to make it there. So I'm going to cut this. This is called a dough scraper. It's made by Wilson. It is one of my favorite tools. You can use it for chopping nuts, but mostly for scraping dough off of a counter or off of a pastry cloth, and also cutting dough when I'm making homemade rolls and other things like that. I use this, this is indispensable if you wanna be doing homemade rolls, breads, and pizzas. I'm going to chop my dough into thirds. Okay, that's about right. So this is the piece. So I'm going to put these other two pieces in my 
bowl to wait until I'm ready to make the second and third pizza. Okay, I'm going to put this here. I've already uh, floured my bowling pin and my stockinette, so I'm ready to go. Depending on if you prefer a thin crust or thicker crust pizza, I personally love the thicker crust pizza because you can put more toppings on it and it can handle the weight. If you want a thinner crust pizza, that's fine too, but then you don't want to put too many items on top of it. So if you just like the taste of your, your cheese and your sauce and only a few couple little items on it, the thinner crust is the way to go. But our family really loves kind of having a chewy, nice, kind of a Chicago pizza crust. So I'm going to kind of stretch this a little bit too, so you can see kind of the window pane here. You can see you can kind of almost see through the dough. Stretching it out again. I've always wished I could be one of those pizza people that could just flip it by hand, but that's not what I do, and this works just great for me. You can see I'm taking the bubbles out. And just one third of this is going to make actually a pretty nice large pizza. By the way, you can freeze your pizza dough. Once it's risen, you can, fr you can freeze out like one of, these little, one of these little mounds of pizza, put it into a plastic wrap so it doesn't dry out, put it in your freezer, and then take it out in the morning, you're ready, and it will spend the day thawing out, and you can use it for your pizza that night. So you can make your pizza dough ahead of time. Okay, now at this point right now, I'm going to go ahead. I'm using a regular jelly roll pan since I don't have a pizza paddle. And the reason I love this and using parchment paper is it's gonna slide easily onto my pizza stone. So I'm gonna take my pizza and just lift it up off of there and kind of stretch it out onto my, onto my uh, parchment paper. The first thing I'm gonna do to start my pizza, and this is something I've been doing for years, is I love to cover it with olive oil. It just gives great flavor and when it starts cooking, it just has that, um, Beautiful, chewy, golden tone onto the crepe crust. Looks really great. So I just use my hands, because I, of course, have washed my hands. And I just spread that on, especially around the edges. It just adds that extra bit of flavor into the pizza. Okay, there we go. Now, the, the first thing I'm gonna put on our pizza is some barbecue sauce that I've already pre-made and has been cooled. just depending on how much you like. Everybody really loves this sauce, so you can be generous with it. This barbecue chicken pizza is going to have three different types of cheese. We've already put on some mozzarella, some uh, shredded gouda, and now we're gonna put on a little bit of cheddar queso too. It just makes it really cheesy and delicious. Okay, on top of that, we're gonna add our chicken pieces. However you like to arrange it or however much you like. If you like a lot of chicken, put a lot on. If you just want just a taste and mostly the cheeses that you're going to be eating, you can do that. Uh, we like to add olives to our, our chicken pizza because we're big olive fans. Um, a little red onion just adds that little bit of spice to it that really needs it to taste better. We have cilantro, which is one of the signature ingredients, but that doesn't go on the pizza until after it has already cooked. Okay, now we're ready to put our pizza in the oven. Look how fast that happened, okay? Now I'm gonna open my very hot 475 degree oven. Here's my pizza stone and I'm gonna just slide my parchment paper right onto that pizza stone. And, and usually at this point, I use a little spray bottle filled with water to create steam in my oven. Now a lot of people are out buying steam ovens these days so they can make their own homemade pizza, but you can do it by hand with just a spray bottle. Mine broke and that's why I can't use it right now. But it causes the pizza crust to be very chewy and golden and just so tasty. Our chicken pizza has just been pulled from the oven. It took about 10 to 11 minutes to get to this stage. Nice and browned on the outside. The crust is nice and brownish and the cheese is all melted so it's actually perfect. The last thing we need to do is just put some fresh cilantro right on top. 
Uh, this makes it very gourmet. And then we're going to slice it. And you can see this crust is dripping with cheese, nice and chewy and nicely browned. Can't wait to eat it. Thank you for watching my videos. As your personal cooking coach, I'm here to guide you along the way and give you tips to make the recipe successful. Please post a comment below with any questions, suggestions, or requests for new items you would like me to teach. And let me know how the recipe works out for you. Thank you.